Hiya then folks, welcome to this episode 9, yeah we've made it to episode 9 and as you see there we're no longer on our own moorings, nuts and volts, the poor man's electric boat is now properly working, the tight Yorkshireman along with Dawn and the rest of the team have made an electric boat using a forklift truck motor, a few wires, alright maybe more than a few wires quite a bit of ingenuity and a lot of blood sweat and tears but we have now made it off that home mooring so what we're gonna have a little look at on this vlog is basically just a quick update on some of the things that we've had to do and change over the last week or two just to tweak the system to get it all working and then we'll show some footage of us coming up here and fingers crossed as getting back down to our moorings Right, so this is the first little bit that we've changed around. Obviously you see there, next to the main master switch that basically turns the power on and off for them contactors to bring the power through. We've now roughly mounted the throttle that we've got at the moment. Top of the throttle there, when it's all turned on, it tells us what current voltage we've got. And then this is obviously the bit that we press when we need to move. It is only a temporary thing that. We are gonna look at a different sort of throttle overall uh, because basically as we are driving along, we have to keep our thumb on there, which obviously after a while will get a little bit tiresome. And in my old age, I am getting a bit lazy. But at least for now, that's got in a little bit better position than where we had it, where it was hanging down here and I was having to hold it in my hand all the time. So the next bit that we've had to change around is this bit down here. Obviously you see there, we've got the main control panel. That's the brains of the operation most of which I don't really understand what that does but so long as it's working that's the main thing but as we saw on the first little test drive we did this was getting a little bit hot started overheating and we had to pull over and, uh, and rectify that so what we've added is we've got this aluminium heat sink which is fitted all the way down the back of the control panel which the back of the control panel is metal so it sits flush up to this aluminium which is pulling the heat dispersing the heat away from it and also we've added this little 12 volt computer fan that obviously just blows a little bit of air onto the, the control unit just to keep it nice and cool. And so far, having done this little test drive up here, the unit stayed nice and cold, there were no issues. We'll start the journey then as we come out of the top lock heading down in the direction that we were going. We did come through the locks with another boat, Dreamcatcher, that's on the pond with us. However, they were going further down the canal than we were planning on going. So obviously we let them come out first so that they could get about on their day without being delayed. You'll see at this point as well, both myself and Dawn are looking down into the bottom of the boat as we've not got the deck board down there and we could hear a bit of a clunking noise which we never really established what it was. After a minute or two we kind of took it out of gear and put it back in gear and the noise disappeared. So we magically cured it but I suppose it's something that we are going to need to have a little bit of investigation because there was something just not quite right there to start with. As the footage continues you will see we are running it at normal speed and we have got the sound on in the background so any of the sound that the camera is picking up as the boat's coming along and going past is what you're hearing on the footage there. That's obviously to give an idea as to the sort of sound levels that are generated and as a guide as well as we're on the boat we can comfortably talk to people that are on the bank side as we're passing them such as these fishermen without there being too much interference from the engine which obviously you can get with a normal diesel engine. So as we passed the fishermen there were a few ducks hanging about and Dawn had been baking the day before so she thought she'd be kind and let them have a lemon curd tart for their lunch. However as she broke it up and sprinkled it over the side she put it over the opposite side to where the ducks are can't be having that kind of business. So, there were only one thing for it. Well, we were under that bridge. 
I had to throw her overboard, didn't I? This is where the entertainment started for the couple of people that were hanging about. As we approached the moorings that we were aiming for, there were obviously loads of lily pads around. And I thought, I'm trying to test an electric motor. Last thing I need is to be filling that weed hatch full of weeds and lilies and all manner of things. So I tried to pick out a little path in between them all. And anybody who's ever reversed an arrowboat will tell you. It's not the easiest of things, and especially when you've not really done it very often before. So I'm a bit first to put my hand in the air and say, I did have to edit this quite a bit, otherwise you'd be watching me mooring up for the next 20 minutes. So we moored up, met a brew, best thing you can do all day that mecha brew, checked everything over and everything seemed alright, so after a little break we headed off back out, set off to come back the way we come, back down the canal, back to our home moorings to give ourselves lots of pats on the back and lots of cheering and hollering about how fantastic we were and what a Brilliant job we'd done of making an electric bow. As we headed back down to our mooring, Kate was doing some filming for us, getting some lovely shots of the scenery as we went past and showing the boat in motion. Oh, and she kept filming us as well, <laughs> but I don't think people really want to see that bit. I'm sure them lovely trees are more interesting and that bridge but then inevitably it happened just while we were thinking everything were going perfect there was an almighty bang from the electrics something had clearly gone wrong but looking on the bright side if you're gonna break down you might as well break down somewhere as pretty as this Far nicer than the M1 if you ask me. So Paul and Natasha very kindly towed us back down to our home mooring where we've moored back up and we can now have a look see what's uh, see what's actually going on. I've had to go out and the tight Yorkshireman has had to spend some money. I've had to buy a multimeter. Not happy about that. Not happy about spending money at all. But what we did is obviously we, uh, we got the multimeter Popped it down here onto the positive and negative. The, these are the, the cables that feed the power in. And we have got sort of the 53, 54 volts that we were expecting. Both sides of the fuse, so obviously it is letting power through to the control unit, which as you can see, we've removed that fan out of the way just that we could get to it. So unfortunately, we're reckoning seeing as it's getting power, but not doing anything, none of the lights are coming on. We think there's a problem with that control unit. So that's going to take a bit further investigation and a visit from Simon. Right, so just like with all the best soap operas and dramas, we're leaving it on a cliffhanger this week. And obviously it is a true cliffhanger as well, because obviously even we don't know what's really going to happen. One thing's for sure, we'll definitely get it sorted. It's not going to beat us. Probably going to be looking on eBay and things like that, just seeing what a, what a new control panel is going to be. Get that replaced see what happens from there because there's always a solution to a problem obviously if you are enjoying watching the videos and seeing how uh, nuts and bolts is progressing just click the like button and the subscribe and the little bell next to the subscribe what that'll do is that'll give you notifications just to say that we've put the next video on and it is free to subscribe as well there's no costs involved but due to these problems I think I'm off for a beer now because I think I need one at the thought of spending some money. And there is one thing for sure as well. Dawn's going to be doing some overtime this week to pay for these new bits. And she's definitely not ordering any new shoes this week. But you're alright with that aren't you Dawn? 
think about me buying some new shoes this week. No, well, we'll have a little talk about that. Okay. But yeah, I would just say, obviously, what we have achieved so far is a massive achievement anyway. Obviously, we were bound to come across these little gremlins and things that were going to come and bite us from time to time. So we'll get it sorted and we'll move on from there. But from me, the tight Yorkshireman, here on Nuts and Volts, which is a poor man's electric boat, I'm going to carry on winging it. And we'll see you all next time. I found myself drifting along through the burning sun and the pouring rain. I had to grind some sludge, mug of tea in my hand. Any other life, it was 